Now that we've got the final version of our post form to be able to create a post, let's see how we're going to go through the process of actually uploading the media file and associating it with the post that we want to make in our post collection in Firestore. First of all, to submit a post, they'll click on the post button. And when we're in the process of uploading our file, we want to display this linear progress up at the top underneath our app bar. And also it's worth noting that for both of our inputs, the values in them are optional. So users don't have to provide a caption or a location. So we're not gonna add validation to our form. So how it's gonna work is this. A user clicks on the post button. We want to then disable the button to make sure that they can't resubmit the same post while it's in the process of being uploaded. Then we want to have a piece of state that controls when we're in the process of uploading, say a value called is uploading, to then display this progress. Then what we'll do is we will compress this image file that we have stored in state, and then we'll upload it to Firebase Storage. After that, we'll get back a URL that's going to be returned from Firebase Storage when our media file is actually uploaded, and we'll use that to create our post to reference for our posts that we're going to be making in our post collection in Firestore. And from there, we will reset our state. We'll clear out both of our input values as well as the file in our state. So first of all, let's take care of disabling our post button and creating a state value that's going to indicate when we're uploading our image file. So this piece of state is going to be called is uploading. And this will be a Boolean and by default it'll be set to false. So let's head back down to our build upload form function. We're displaying our app bar. We'll head down to the flat button in actions and to the on pressed, we want to add a ternary where we'll say if is uploading is true, then we want to set the value that we passed to on pressed as null. Null passed to on pressed is going to disable the button make sure we can't click it. Otherwise, to enable the process of submitting our media files and submitting our post, we're going to use an inline arrow function just like this, and at the end, call a function which will create called handle submit, which will, as the name indicates, handle submitting our post. This needs to be provided in the return of a fat arrow function. Otherwise, it's going to be called immediately when the button is enabled. So let's quickly create handle submit above our build upload form function just to remove that error. And next we want to head down to our list view and up at the top of the children list, we want to add a ternary to conditionally display our loading bar when is uploading is true. So if we're uploading, we want to show our linear progress, which will import from our progress.dart file. Otherwise, we just want to use a empty text widget. So now to set is uploading to true, we're going to need to go to handle submit and set state to kick off our uploading process. So we've taken care of the first two parts, disabling our button as well as showing a linear progress. However, now we need to compress our image. Most of the time, even the images, the default images within the gallery are of a very large size, multiple megabytes. So we want to compress this to make the images that we store in our Firebase storage as small as possible. I believe that by default, we have a one gigabyte limit for the free tier of Firebase. So above handle submit, we'll create a function called compress image. And this will be an async function. So what we'll do is we're gonna take the file that's stored in our state and then perform a number of operations to compress it. These patterns aren't something that you need to know, just something that you can basically copy and paste whenever you need to compress an image for any of your Flutter applications. So here let's await the function get temporary directory and we need to auto import a package called path provider in order to, to get this function and the result is going to be stored in a variable called tempdir or temp directory. So we want to get a temporary directory and from it get its path. So tempdir.path and we'll put it in a variable 
called path. Then we'll need to use a package known as image. So we'll have to import this manually. We'll import package image slash image dot dart. And we want to alias it as I am. So now we're going to take I am dot decode image and pass in our file and on it we'll use a method called read as bytes sync and we'll put the result in a new variable called image file with the type of im dot image and now we need to create a unique ID we'll do so in state this will be a string will be called post ID and we're going to make a unique string with the UUID package. So we'll import UUID and we'll execute this and specifically we want off of it the v4 method. So now we have a unique string stored in post ID and we're going to use that in creating a path for our image, our compressed image. So with this line we're basically reading our image file that we have in state and we're putting it in this image file variable and now we're going to create a path for it and write to that path and the result is going to be our compressed image file so with file this file constructor will pass in first the interpolated path value from tempter.path slash image underscore then we'll use our post ID that we have stored in state dot JPEG. We'll store this as a JPEG file and we'll chain on with dot dot the method write as bytes sync. Then we'll take im dot encode JPEG our image file. And we can decide what quality we want this image to be created as to create it to have. So we can set it anywhere from zero to a hundred. I'm going to choose the value 85, so a pretty high quality image. And then finally, we can get the result that's written to this path as our final compressed image file. And we are going to update our file and state with this compressed file. So don't be too concerned if you don't understand every part of this. I just wanted you to know the basics of what's going on here. And now within handle submit, we need to make this an async function and we want to await compress image. So we want to compress our image and put it in state before we upload it. And now to actually take care of uploading our image, we're going to execute a new function here that we'll make called upload image. We're going to pass in our image file from state and we'll await this. So this will be an async function as well. So for upload image, It'll accept our image file. And first of all, to be able to upload files to our Firebase storage, we need a reference to it, just like we had a reference to all of our user collections. So since we've been creating references within our home.dart file, we'll add our reference there as well up at the top. And we'll begin by importing Firebase storage from the Firebase storage package and we want to get its instance just like we did firestores dot ref so we can put the result in a final variable called storage ref and this is going to be of type storage reference so now heading back to upload dot dart we'll take our storage ref first making sure we've imported home dot dart and we want to chain on the method child and child is going to be necessary for providing the name of the file that we're going to be uploading. So we'll provide that as a string and we'll prepend each post image with post underscore. And once again, we'll use our post ID that's stored in state. And at the end, we'll add dot JPEG as its extension. Then after that, we will use put file in order to upload our image file that we're passing to this function. And the result is going to be put in a variable, which we'll call upload task and this is going to be of type storage upload task 
And note to add this type, we'll need to import Firebase Storage in this file as well. Now the next operation will be asynchronous. So we'll need to await upload task dot on complete. And this returns a storage task snapshot so we can get data about the file that we uploaded. So we'll call this variable that we're putting the result of this in storage snap. That's of type storage task snapshot. And to get the uploaded files URL, we can await storage snap dot ref dot get download URL. And we'll store that in a string variable called download URL. And we want to return that from this function to pass to our to pass back to handle submit. So the return type of future upload is going to be a future which resolves to a string. So now the result of the return value of upload image is going to be stored in a string variable called media URL. So at this point we're disabling the button, we're showing our loading progress, we're compressing our image, and we're getting back the media URL, the download URL, after our image is uploaded to Firebase Storage. And now we want to take that media URL and add it to the post that we create in our post collection in Firestore. So let's execute a new function here, create post in Firestore, which we'll then make. So we haven't talked just yet about what each post is going to consist of, all of its fields, but we know that two fields that it needs to have are the location as well as the caption. So how are we going to get those values from our inputs? Well, once again, we're going to use a text editing controller. So we'll add up at the top of upload state a location controller for our location input set to text editing controller. So type, that's of the same type. And we'll just copy this and make one for our caption controller. So let's head back down to our build upload form function. And first of all, we'll find the list tile that contains our caption text field. So we'll add to it controller and set that to caption controller. And then for our text field where we can type in the location we'll set that to location controller. And now we can get each of their text values from that controller.text. So then heading back to our, where was it? Create post in Firestore. This function is going to accept three arguments and these are gonna be named arguments. So we'll first create the parameters within the function itself. We're going to pass in a string called media URL, a string location and a string which we'll call description. So now to create post in Firestore, media URL is going to be set to media URL, location set to location controller dot text and then description to caption controller dot text. And now to add this new post to our post collection is going to be pretty simple. First, we're going to need to have a post ref. So we'll add back in home.dart a new ref called post ref that refers to an unmade collection, the ID of posts. So now we'll use that. And how this collection is going to be organized is going to be similar to how I mentioned it would be within our organizing our database video, where we talked about how we're going to have a collection which will have a given document on it and that's going to consist of a sub collection and in this case posts is going to have on its documents a sub collection of user posts where we're going to be able to get all of a user's posts by linking their ID the currently authenticated user's ID to posts and then we're going to have a collection of user posts, which is going to contain all of the posts that they've made. Feel free to take a look at that video if you need some refreshing. But for right now, we're going to take the posts ref, 
will provide a document with the ID coming from widget.currentuser.id. Then we'll have a collection of user posts, then a document linking to the individual posts with their post ID, which we have stored in state. Then we'll use set data to use our custom ID and for the map that we'll put on our document, we'll first add a post ID directly on as one of our fields, then an owner ID with the current user's ID once again, then the username associated with it from widget.currentuser.username media URL for displaying our image, description set to the description that we're passing to this function, location to location, and once again we'll use timestamp which we're getting from home.dart and likes, all of a post likes are going to be stored on a map. We'll talk more about this later. So now this is all that we need in order to add our new posts with our created media URL. And finally, the last step is to clear out our state. We want to clear the clear out the text inputs and clear out the file that we have stored. So first we'll take both of the controllers and call on them clear. Both caption controller and location controller. And then finally we'll set state and we want to set file to null and set is uploading back to its initial value of false. And one small step that we need to take for now before we upload our post is that we need to head back to our storage resource and we need to change the rules just a bit to give us permission to be able to actually upload an image. So we'll go to rules and here we just want to allow read, write, and remove this last part where if request.auth is not equal to null. Right now we just want to allow all reads and writes and we'll publish that change. So now we can head back to our app. So at this point we should have everything that we need to be able to upload a file and create a post. So let's save upload.dart and we'll do a complete restart and now we'll try uploading an image. So we'll select upload image I'll choose an image from the gallery. And what should we expect to happen here? Well first, when we've got our post prepared, we'll select post. Our button will be disabled. We won't be able to select it again while we're in the process of uploading our file. We should see our linear progress here up at the top. Our image should be compressed and put back within state. Then we'll take that compressed image, upload it to Firebase Storage, we're going to get back a media URL from that process and taking the information that we have here within our form, we're going to create a post in our post collection and we're going to clear out our state and be taken back to the splash screen. So let's write a caption as well as a location and then we'll hit post. And we see after a brief second, we're taken back to the splash screen. If we check out our debug console, we can see some logs for the progress for the storage task event type, which is what we'll get when we're uploading something to Firebase Storage. So we see progress and then success, so that's good. And now if we take a look at our Firebase Storage, we'll refresh it, and we can see one file in here prepended with post and then our unique post ID. We see its size of 1.27 megabytes. It's a JPEG, which is what we compressed it to and when it was made. And now for our database, if we take a look at that, we see a new post collection. We see the ID here is the same as our user ID. So that's good. And then we have our user post collection where we set a unique post ID, which if you compare with what we put in storage, 
is exactly the same. So we have user posts, we have our one post, and we have all of the related information, our description, the likes map, location, the media URL from our uploaded file, the owner ID, the post ID, the timestamp, and the username for who created this. So this is great. Now users within our app can create posts with whatever media file they like that's available on their device. And before we close out this already quite long video, I want to make one addition to our upload.dart file, which will be a very important one. So say we're signed into our app and we want to create multiple posts. Within our app, upload state is going to be created likely just once, and therefore when our state's created, we know that post ID, this state value is created and it's assigned a unique string. Well, what's the issue? Well, the issue is that if we head down to handle submit, where we're setting our state values, saying file is set to null, is uploading to false, we're basically clearing out our state, the issue is that we're not resetting our post ID. So what's going to take place? Well, for our post created in Firestore, it's going to reference the same post ID, so it's going to be overwritten. And we're using that same post ID in uploading an image in referencing the name of the file, the child that we're adding to the storage ref. So as a result, we have to make sure that our post ID value is different every time our handle submit function runs. So we just have to, at the end, when we're calling set state, set post ID to a different unique string value, which again we can do with uuid.v4. So again, a very small step, but it's going to make sure that all of our posts are added correctly, not rewritten, and displayed to our users.